Hello everyone! In this video I'm going to show you some ways that I use the screenshot tool in my classroom. So if you're not familiar with the screenshot tool, if you look at your tools over to the right, it's the little scissors that if you click on, you have two options at the top, screenshot or hide screenshot. The only difference between those two is if you click screenshot, it keeps your classroom. This is the lovely face that I have here. It keeps your classroom so you can screenshot anything in your classroom, outside your classroom, but your classroom stays visible to you. If you click on the second option, hide screenshot, all this does is hides your classroom. So if you're trying to screenshot something that's on your computer, but it's behind your classroom window that you have open, it will hide that so you can then take a screenshot of something that's behind your classroom and then it pops automatically into your classroom. So I think a lot of people use it the way that I also mostly use this and I use it for like preparing lessons or making EDB activities because sometimes you can easily just copy paste images into the classroom but sometimes you might have an image that's a part of another document that you can't just cut and paste. So having that screenshot tool makes it very easy to take a picture of any image on any document anywhere on your computer and you can pop it into the classroom. But the way I've been using it lately is trying to do it to have more fun and interact with my students in the classroom during our lessons. So I'm going to show you three examples of ways that I have used the screenshot tool in my classes. So I love the video boxes because I can move them around and have fun with them in my classroom. But the only negative is I can't draw on top of or move objects on top of our video boxes. I can draw under and around, but I can't draw on top of them. So one way to be able to draw on top of you and the student is to use that screenshot tool. So here we go. So I'm going to click the button and keep in mind, as soon as you click the button, it freezes everything on your screen. It freezes your image and the student's image. That way you could take the picture. So I'm just gonna smile. And I'm going to take an image of myself. And then I could also do this for the student as well. And then I can use my lovely picture here to interact with. So for example, Let's say you're learning about hair, hair color, hair length, hair styles, something about your hair. You can take a screenshot of you or the student and you can draw on this picture and give yourself some different hairstyles. So I could say, hmm, I want long blue hair. So I can give myself some long blue hair and the student can do the same thing for themselves. What color hair do you want to have? And then they can draw in their hair and you can talk about different hairstyles, different hair colors. This looks terrible, but the students have a lot of fun with this because now they get to draw on themselves or draw on their teacher and you can have fun with it. I can give myself some freckles. Here's some freckles. I can give myself a hat. There are so many things you could do with using this screenshot of yourself or for your student. And the students love this. They get a kick out of it. They think it is hilarious, but you're also learning at the same time. So this is one way I use my screenshot tool to have fun in my classroom. The second is for games. So I like to do a lot of review games. Usually at the beginning of every class, I do some type of review activity or review game. And one of them is a board game. Very simple board game that I made on class in. But I sometimes will just use like a picture. I'll have them choose like their favorite animal. And then I can choose that animal for them in here, of course, I can't find an animal. So let's say their favorite animal is a dog. I could type in dog, and then I can click on the dog, and now I can use this dog as my piece to move around the game board. I do that a lot, but sometimes I like to mix it up a bit, and instead, we use our pictures of ourselves. So I will take a picture of myself, there's me, and I will take a picture of the student, and then I can make it smaller, and then, Instead of using some random picture, we can use our images 
to move across the game board as we play. So that's the second way that I use the screenshot. And then the third way is similar to the first one, but instead of drawing on the images, I can use it to move things on top of my image. So I'm going to open up. This is an activity I made for one of my lessons because my student needed some extra help with the sentence frame that we were working on. Can I have some bananas, please? Or can I have some fruit, please? Can I have some bananas, please? I said bananas already. So can I have whatever food, please? So I first made this with just the monsters, and then the student was able to drag the monsters into their mouth, which was fun. My student loved it. But as you go down, we had a few examples here. My last one is where I use the screenshot. It says, take a screenshot of student with mouth open. <laughs> so some students might not be as comfortable with this, but try it, see what they want to do, if they want to try it, or you can just do it with yourself. I always model with myself first. It usually makes them feel a little more comfortable instead of trying to explain what to do. So I just went, ah, then I take my screenshot. And then I made myself bigger. And then I practiced the sentence frame. But keep in mind, if you add an image on top of something else, you will have to move it to back. So obviously, if I move these over right now, they would go behind my head. So you would just go to the square, and I want to send to back. So now, when they move the image or the pictures on top of me, now it goes on top of my face rather than behind my face and I can lock it in so they can't move it. And then we practice the sentence frame. Since it's me, I would ask, can I have some bananas, please? And then the student was able to give me the bananas. Can I have some spiders, please? And my student was able to give me some spiders. And my student that I did this with absolutely loved this activity where she actually, the next class said, can we do the monster feeding please? <laughs> but I said, no, not today. So then you can take turns and then try to get your students, say open wide, ah, and then you can take the screenshot and then drag the food into their mouth. This is just one example of dragging things on top, but I'm sure there are many, many more that you could think of as well. So those are just some ways that I use that screenshot tool, not just to make EDBs and prepare lessons, but to actually use it in the classroom to make the class more interactive and more fun for your students. And I guarantee the first time you take a screenshot of yourself and your student in the classroom and do something with it, they will think it is hilarious. So hopefully this helps somebody out there who's looking for some ways to spice up your lessons. Have a good day. Bye everyone.